your cook today, uh, I've known her for more than 40 years. <laughs> I met her in, in high school, yeah, well, seventh grade. And uh, we were just not even special friends, we were just uh, acquaintance, you know, kind of passing by and say hi. And um, we've been married for 40 years this coming December. Nice. All right. Amen. She is the hero. <laughs> uh, when we got married, the kitchen wasn't an issue until she got tired of me cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so she decided to dig into cooking not only as a duty at the home, but she took it a step far, harder, and she started to learn how to cook professionally. Uh, it was so, she was so good at it that when she started working with the ABC in Puerto Rico, they, somebody offered her a cooking program. So she started bringing the product from the ABC and doing a little infomercial. Well, and she said, if this, you can get it at, at the ABC. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and she just cooked for, uh, for uh, the good time. And after that, um, she, we moved here. And while she was here, she took a full uh, course and became uh, a chef, a vegan or vegetarian chef. Uh, you see her quiet, but she is, uh, uh, she has a, a lot of knowledge here in the area of cooking. So um, this is, that's one of the reasons we call this learning to cook from the A to Z because she is a gospel singer. And so I just twisted, put her name, Zinia Agosto, and then I twisted it from A to Z. So I'm um, happy to introduce to you our teacher today, Zinia uh, Agosto, that happens to be my good, good wife. Thank you. I'm happy that you're all here, and thank you for coming, even though we have a tremendous rainy day, but I'm very grateful you're here. Uh, since, I, since I was a child, I have always lived, liked to learn about food. My mom used to work for the agricultural department in Puerto Rico under the extension program on the food and administration department in those days. I don't know if they still have it, but it was a good thing that she always liked to teach and um, help uh, people with uh, low income. So I remember as a kid going with her to teach a group of ladies that were already together in a home eager to learn about food and nutrition and how to prepare good dishes on a tight budget. It was such a great experience being there and help my mom even though I was a child. I will remember that. Since then I learned a lot more about food and nutrition and culinary arts. And many years later, here I am in the Northwest, one of the most vegan, vegetarian, friendly places. This inspired me to learn more about cooking and finding and healthy recipes. One of the first books in my search I found was Professional Vegetarian Cooking from Ken Bergeron. It's one of those that are there that I put some, many samples of some of the cookbooks that I have. So Ken Bergeron, in his book, he talked specifically for those chefs that are learning, and he is he, he's a vegetarian chef, but he was teaching how to approach the vegetarian and vegan lifestyle into the restaurant because not only was was good for you, but because it was a growing market on that time, and he needed to create this book. And you want to browse, he has excellent recipes. And the people that want to do pasta without egg, he has excellent recipes there. And it's a good, 
cookbook, and that was my first cookbook. Fast forward 20 years later, we have restaurants now serving vegetarian and vegan cuisine uh, options. You open Google to do a search and for X recipe, and you will find hundreds of ideas. Have you done that? Mm -hmm. Yes, isn't it? You can go find and collect your recipes in Pinterest, which I have plenty. <laughs> go into Amazon and buy hundreds, and you can find hundreds of vegan or vegetarian cookbooks. Or you now find magazines also, all plant-based. Even now, you can go to the supermarket and find plenty of choices for vegan diet. So my point is, there is no excuse. We can incorporate a vegan or vegetarian meal into our diet. Little by little, if you are starting, and every week you incorporate a vegan diet, and you will notice a difference in your lifestyle and in your health. Why eat vegan? Some research has linked vegan diets with lower blood pressure and cholesterol. We find no cholesterol in the plant-based diet, you know? It's always when you eat, if you eat vegetarian in eggs and cheese, you will find cholesterol. So it's a better option if you are aware that you have to be cholesterol high, just try to incorporate more vegan options in your home. A vegan, a vegan diet is rich in nutrients. It can help you lose excess weight, lower blood sugar levels, and improve kidney function, protect against certain cancers, and is linked to a lower risk of heart disease, lower rates of for type 2 diabetes. And vegan diet can reduce pain for arthritis also. It's a great opportunity to learn more about nutrition and cooking and improve your diet. So my main recipe for today's class is one that I've had for years. You know, you have a recipe for years that you put aside and then you say, you know, let me revise this recipe and let me um, um, modify it. And that's what I did. I did with this recipe. In my curiosity, I search into the web for similar recipes from the one we are about to make today. And believe me, there are hundreds of recipes with this uh, that I'm going to do today. It's a macaroni and cheese. You can find it. The cheese made it done from cashews. That's the most uh, um, macaroni and cheese recipes, vegan, that you could find. Done with cashews, done with butter and squash, so it will be yellow, done with potatoes and carrots. There are many, many recipes that you can find. So why this recipe then? You may ask. I wanted to start from zero, the simple way. This recipe is simple, and most of the ingredients you have at hand in home. You will probably need to buy two or three ingredients, like uh, um, nutritional yeast, that sometimes you don't have it in your pantry, which you just need to start having it in your pantry. <laughs> so if you don't have it, that is something that you can buy. You find it in any market right now. You go to Winko, you find it. You go to Walmart, you will find it in a container with the name brand Bratz. You will find it there. You go to Winko, Walmart, Alderson, and Fred Myers. Anything that I have here on this recipe today, you can find it there. Even many mixes of flours that are gluten-free, vegan, or different type of pasta. I've got some pasta here. Um, red lentil and quinoa. Have you seen this one? Very good pasta. We have another one here, penne pasta. This is with um, garbanzo flour and then the flour, I think it has. Yeah, and it's gluten free. It has pea flour also. And this one is a brown rice pasta. And Trader Joe's is going to be your favorite friend because they have so many choices there also. And Fred Myers, and there's some no excuse to incorporate any variety of vegetables or vegan diet uh, recipes in your repertoire. Okay, so this recipe is economical, budget friendly. It's a not free recipe. Usually you find recipes that are not with a lot of nut, and sometimes you can carry nut in your home. It's a good, now is a good time to buy some 
But this recipe is not free. It's a creamy, it's flavorful, and it's a dual purpose recipe. I like those recipes. When you do the sauce, you can have some baked potatoes, and you can put that sauce on top of the baked potatoes. And, or you can put this sauce. What we're gonna do today is over um, macaroni pasta, pepper pasta. Okay, so it's a dual recipe. So let's start. The first ingredient that we're going to be using is wet soy plus soy milk. You can buy or you can buy any um, any other milk, but I like this milk for doing this recipe. They have the recipe in there. Do you have the handout? And yeah. that's the first one. Okay. So I have the milk already here. It's mixed. One and two third cup of milk of your choice, unsweetened. It because we're going to have a savory dish, okay? Right here. Done. We're going to have one third cup of flour, and if you are gluten-free, you can put a little bit of gluten-free flour instead. But this is regular flour. I, I use uh, whole wheat paste-free flour on this one. to do 
now is turn off this our stove. I need my my assistant here. <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs>
and they put it in a brine. You have sauteed onions, that's what I have there in the container, some sauteed onions, you have bell peppers, you have even put some peas and uh, um, some dried tomatoes, steam broccoli, but don't cook the broccoli until it get gray, no bueno. <laughs> and then you can have uh, mushrooms, and uh, you can have tempeh, or if you want to have it a little bit spicy, some jalapenos on it. Mm, that would be very interesting. So this sauce is very friendly. You can change it according to your health uh, style and according to your taste, because there's so many things that you can incorporate into this sauce. So yes, this is already thick. show you how it looks now. Mm, I have a last spoon and have that. So let me show you here. <laughs> so it is very sweet. And, and the color is very nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then it's very kind of cheesy like and with all the spices done on it. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is bring this tray in it here. It has some of the pasta already. And put some the sauce. Until the last drop. That's why the chef told me when I was taking class. I always remember that. Until the last drop, because this is goodness. A lot of good flavor. And if you want to now, this is the time for you to want to incorporate anything different than this. This is the time. I have some onions, mushrooms, and red pepper. You can put on top of it. <laughs> and mix it up with the sauce. <laughs> Like 
in others, yes. Those are things that I like to add on when I clean pasta. It has this, this nice flavor.
garlic, and I'm going to add on this a little bit of onion powder. They didn't have onion powder, I think, in the recipe. And always, I like to have a little bit of flavor of the onion. So I'm going to mix here just a little bit and put it on the top. And I think the ladies are almost ready to um, distribute that for you to taste. See, it, it gives you a kind of a little cheeky. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. It gives you this little cheesy flavor and it gives you the texture. Um, that you like on um, the recipe, on my macaroni and cheese recipe, I give you an alternative with breadcrumbs. You can do breadcrumbs at home. Toast two or two or three pieces of bread in the in the toaster, and then leave it in the toaster for a little bit until the cake dry. You go ahead, leave it toasting, and then they pop up, leave it in the toaster, and you continue doing other stuff. When you come back, it will be very hard, isn't it? Then you blend it and in the food processor. You put process it in the food processor and add all the spices. My favorite three spices to do is to have at home is garlic powder, Italian seasoning, and onion powder. Those three ingredients at home are one of the main ingredients at home for doing anything. Because it gives you a, a, a more balanced flavor. The flavor that we like, I mean, you can add from that, you can add, add any other flavor, but those three flavors are the ones that I like to have more in home. Okay? You can add this in here, and I think they're ready. I like always also to put a little bit of olive oil. I like to end and dish with a little bit of oil, mm -hmm. oil because it gives you an end of this flavor. It's kind of a creamy and give nice flavor to the to the dishes. So I'm gonna add a little bit at the end. Garlic is 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 garlicky, but it's actually a green marinade, and this is going to be for your salad. Benefits of tofu or soy milk; those are the more the the ingredient that have all the amino acids. So that is something that we need in our diet. Being a vegan or vegetarian, we need to have, especially vegan. Our amino acids complete okay, in our diet. So let me pick up now the recipe for that. Green marinade for tofu. So the tofu that I buy, um, the one that I like to buy is in the cash and carry. If you have a cash and carry here, uh, it's more economical. 
This comes in a box like this. It's non-GMO, non-genetically modified. So I like to buy that, that box because it comes, the box just comes just like this. And the first thing that you're going to come, because it comes in a water pack, what we need to do first is take it out from the water pack, put it in a plate, the four one, take another plate, put it on top, and then put something heavy on top. Those cans of tomatoes, you can put it on top. <laughs> and leave it there. And leave it there. So all, all the water goes out. Then you drain it after 10 minutes, you drain it, put the place on top, put the cans on top, leave it there, drain it one more time, and then you cut it in cube, and that's what we're going to be doing now. And you know the, the little game, Ruby Cubes? It's going to be like that. You're going to be cutting it just like that. Ruby Cube. So you take your block. You cut it in half, that half you cut it in threes. That other half you cut it in threes again. And this other part of the cube you cut it in half. Just visualize the ruby cube. So you're going to be cutting a lot of little cubes. You cut it in half again. You cut it in half again. You turn it this side to the other side. You cut it in half. That other half, you cut it in half again. And half again. So you have little cubes like this. Okay? Little cubes like that. And that we'll put it in on a dish that is um, flat because on that dish you're going to add the olive oil, good extra virgin olive oil. You're going to add fresh lemon juice to that container. You're going to add the salt, one and a half to two teaspoons of salt. If you're going to have, uh, if, if you're going to use it as a croutons, because you can bake this also. That's the two for one recipe. If you want to bake it, you add a little bit more of salt, like the two teaspoons, because it's give it, going to give more flavor. If you're going to add it to, to, a, to a salad, to have other things, so you can have one and a half teaspoon. But you know, you, you want to, you want to, um, Incorporate that flavor because the salt is what's going to have the flavor on it. Basil, oregano, not Mexican. There's difference of Mexican oregano and Mediterranean oregano. We're going to be using the Mediterranean oregano, okay? Onion powder and garlic powder. Usually in all recipes, when you're going to see the onion powder and garlic powder proportion, onion powder is the one that's going to be double from the garlic powder. Usually if it's one teaspoon of onion powder, half teaspoon of garlic powder. That's most of, that's the proportion that you can see most of the time. Dry basil, or, and you mix all of that in the shallow dish like this. Okay? And then with the spoon, the spatula, or spatula, you start moving all those ingredients together. And I think you have on, on your on your uh, salad a little bit of, of that. Okay? So you move it like that. And leave it for one day to another one. And I'm telling you, you're going to really like it because you can even bake this and when you bake it, they, they are like croutons. And you can add it to, a, to the salad, and it will come a little bit more, like a crispy thing. Yes, it's, it's very good. I hope you like it, okay? And this is something that you can add in your diet. And you won't miss the feta cheese, let me tell you. I prefer this more than the feta cheese. Okay? I hope you 
like that one also. I always like to cover mine with a little bit of, of uh, uh, cling wrap because you know you have oil in this, so I want it to grab in the in the cover of the container. Did you get some of those, of those croutons of, of, from the feta? Do you like it? Yes. It has a very good flavor. You leave it from one day to another one. Okay. So, um, and on the salad, you want the salad to have a little crunch in it. You have something soft like the pasta, and then you want the salad to have some crunchy. So I, I like to uh, put on the salad some um, other radishes. They're very crispy, and I like to add some onions. Sometimes, if you cut the onions too big, it just, they are not, if you cut it very, very thin, it just, you have the flavor, but it's not a punch of a flavor. So, if, if you want to use your knife, you can use your knife, but if you want something that is easier for you, you buy a little mentally. And I'm telling you, it's something very easy, and fast to cut. You can cut your radish and very thin one, or you can cut a little bit more thick, more thick, like this. Okay? And if you want to cut the radishes like little um, julienes, very thin, you can go ahead and cut it like that. Okay? And put it in your salad. Very nice little slices like that. Question. Yes. Because you're putting in the olive oil, is it not going to thicken, or how does it react in the refrigerator as a marinade? The marinade you will thick, but you leave it outside a little bit before you serve, and it will dilute that that oil, and then you just start doing it. Once you know that you're going to be preparing already the food, you just leave it outside. By the time that you finish preparing your salad, it will be ready. And you keep moving it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, also you can use it to cut the mandolin. You can use it to cut your um, cucumber. So it will be very thin, all thicker. Or if you want to use your onions, I like the flavor of the onion and the salad, the red onion, but I don't like it to be thick. thick. So one of the things that if I cut it by hand, which I, I don't mind cutting it by hand, but if you don't want to cut it by hand, if you have the mandolin, you can cut it the size that you want. So it's very thin, you see? And then you can cut it half, smaller sizes. That's a, a good thing to have in your kitchen. So the last of the recipes that we're going to be showing today is gingerbread cookie. Do you like gingerbread cookie? Oh yes, we do all like gingerbread cookie. And it's not only for Christmas time or Thanksgiving. You can do it anytime. Okay? meal on the recipe and you have information about the flax. It's rich in omega-3 and that is something that you should incorporate that in your diet all the time. You have the information on, on, on it. You have information on the tofu also. And I didn't talk about a lot of the mushroom, the benefit of the mushroom on, on, on your diet, on, on things like this. One of the things that I like about mushroom is has a natural um, flavor enhancement 
on your dishes because it has the natural glutamic acids in in uh, um, in the ingredients. So when you add it up in a stew or if you add it up in a sauce like this, it just enhances the flavor of it. So and you don't need to have the monosodium glutamate because it's that's very bad for your body. But this has another like the umami flavor and that's the reason that I introduced the mushroom on this also. If the umami, you know, the, we have the sweet, the salty, the bitter, and the sour. The other flavor that was discovered, it was the umami. It's a flavor that it has this ingredient, the mushroom has, and other ingredients like the soy sauce. It makes that a flavor on your dish that is a different flavor on your salad. And that's, I did mention that I wanted to make sure that you know. Okay, now we're going to back to present, talk about a little bit of the gingerbread cookies. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to be, when you are working with flour, one of the things that I want you to learn, and, and probably you know, but I want always to, you guys to remember, when you are measuring flour, you first of things that is, you should do is puff up the, the flour. You need to make sure that the flour is a little bit more airy on it. And then, when you are needed to measure it, for example, one cup of flour, in this case, and you're measuring flour, you're, you just put it like an airy, like that, okay? And then, with the back of, of, of your fork or your finger, or you just scrape it. If you do this and then add more flour on it, what is gonna happen is that your end of recipe is gonna be very hard because you put more flour that you need to put. If you weigh this, this, the, this um, cup and the one that you already put over flour, you, you will weigh more. So make sure that when you make uh, a recipe, don't overflow your, yeah, just airy, you put that flour like that, okay? So we have here three cups of flour, two, cups of whole wheat flour and one cup of all-purpose flour, okay? The pastry flour that we use is the whole wheat and the reason that we have pastry flour because that is the best flour when you're doing cookies, pastries, uh, um, and then because it's a soft flour, it comes from a soft wheat, okay? And that's what we're going to be using today. On, on this flour, we're going to add the flax meal. And the best way that we can absorb in our body a flax is if you, if you grind it. How do you grind it? You can grind it in your blender, but you cannot grind in your blender two tablespoons. You need in your blender to, to grind more, so it will be more bulky, and the blender will carry more ingredients to, to blend. But if you don't have, but if you have a coffee grinder, that's the best choice. That's the best choice because you, you, the coffee grinder grinds that little seeds much better. It has more friction on it because it's a smaller. So you can use the coffee grinder for that or any other nuts. So we're gonna and it's more absorb absorb better on your body if you do flex. You know. Okay, you do flex and you will see how they will come very soft. All the spices I have it here, and those are the ground cinnamon, ground ginger, cloves. And make sure that your spices are the one who's gonna be doing the flavor of your cookie. Make sure that the, your spices are not expired or out of flavor. I had some ginger spice at home that I was doing when I was practicing the recipe, and and he said, oh, but this. 
there's something on my cookie that is not, oh, I think I used the wrong ginger. So I went, I remember I have another ginger container on it, and then on this one. Um, and I, it's an organic one, it's still pretty good. So it just made the change completely. So make sure that you have fresh spices, okay? Well, I, 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 I ate all the old cookies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, oh, there's something wrong with this cookie. Is this a recipe in the, oh, I think my spices are bad. So make sure yeah. that the spices are good. It, it make sure that you keep your spices in a dark place, in a closet. It's, those are nice, those spice racks are nice that you put there, but those are nice, but you want to preserve because the spices and, and if they have light and heat, they will get bad faster. So it's good to have your spices in the closet, in a, in a cabinet with all the spices racks, okay? So make sure that the spices are good. There. I love the smell. Okay, and then you have your baking soda. I like to have the buttered milk. There's a complete line of buttered milk that you can find, and uh, um, there's, that's a good baking soda because it doesn't have aluminum. So okay, and, and the salt is in here also. You put that. You make sure that you incorporate that. And then we have the sugar. If you don't want to use brown sugar, you can use um, coconut sugar also. How do you make it here? Um, the, the, the regular brown sugar, it has this molasses flavor. The coconut sugar, it has more this this nutty flavor and mm -hmm. coconut, I don't know, do you use more the coconut flavor? Uh, no, uh, no, you can use the straight across. Yeah, no, you, you, you can, that's what I'm saying, you can use both of them, but she was asking yes. the flavor, on the flavor. Oh, uh, the flavor, you got the molasses. Yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So it's not mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe, I have to check again, but I believe that the coconut sugar is a little lower than the glycemic. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, it, is. it is lower from the glycemic. And that's the so one of the things. Or if you don't want mm -hmm. a refined sugar, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a good option. Yes, exactly. So we're going to put that here. And because I like to use my hands, that's your favorite tool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm going to break a little bit here, but I'm not going to put my hand in it because I can make much better with my tool. <laughs> Feels good though. Very good. Mm. And it smells good. My goodness. I really love the smell. Okay. And it's faster. You use your tool and it's faster, actually. Okay? Everything is incorporated nicely here. I need the, the mold that are ready with the with the um, sheet on top. Okay. Thank you. So I'm gonna put this side. This side. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Oh yeah. I'm gonna show it how to. Okay. They're gonna put it here, and then we can start putting some of that. Okay. So now we're going to mix the liquid. The liquid of this is two-third cup of water and then one-third cup of canola oil or any oil that is flavorless. But I like olive oil and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for me the flavor. So olive oil will be. <laughs> People get it all over the flavor. No, you don't even gonna feel it or you don't even taste it because it just you have so much spice and sugar and you know it has so many other things that you won't gonna feel it. Okay, one third cup, one third cup. And when you use the molasses, the first thing that you do is the oil. Because 
of the molasses, when you put it in here, it will go very fast. Okay? You use the oil first. And then we will slide out really fast from the container. Okay? And the same amount. Okay, so very good idea. So when we finish mixing this, you're going to use a scoop, just like this, depending how big you want your cookie. And you, I'm going to put it there so you have an idea. And then it's, you're going to leave it in the oven only 10 minutes. No more, no less, 10 minutes only. And the reason is that because they are brown and you think, oh, they're already done, or, or I need to put it there. They, they're going to be overcooked, okay? And the other reason is, on your pan, it will keep them warm. So when you get it out, you set it on your counter, it will keep cooking a little bit. So don't leave it at the oven more than 10 minutes, okay? You see, it doesn't have any eggs in this recipe. So you can eat the dough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to cook it for you, okay? <laughs> yeah, that was the one thing that I really enjoyed. My mom always told me, you can't eat the cookie dough. <laughs> so when I grew up and was plant-based, I'd say, I can eat the cookie dough, Mom. <laughs> That's so you can't. I said, I have no eggs in mine. <laughs> Ready at 375. 
five degrees. together because when they bake they will expand a little bit so I put four in a row and try to keep it a little bit far from each one. Like it? Yeah. I like the spice one. You eat it, you, you, you eat your cookies with a glass of soy milk or almond milk. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can eat all the ones that don't taste good that didn't come here. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> I think I have my cashews around here. 
I think it's in the back. Someone can be, I think it's in, in the counter here from cashews. And then we have the three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. We have this one that we can use. Thank you.
It's not there, so if you want to add it, add it. I just like the balance. Okay? And that's it. And now we're going to mix it. Thank you. 